What's going on everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo and we are back for another episode review of Catfish. This is season 7 episode 35 Matthew and Chance. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with the thumbs up or thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode of Catfish was a hot damn mess, okay? <sighs> I still have a lot of questions. A lot of my questions didn't get answered, but the shit was crazy as hell. So we just go ahead and get, get right into the review, y'all. So we have Matthew, he's 29. He has been talking to Chance, 31 from New York. Now, Matthew says that um, he had posted a post on his social media about his friend that he had, Barbie, that passed away. And then, um, Chance had commented on his post and that's how they met. They started DMing each other from there. From there, they exchanged phone numbers and they started talking on a regular basis. Now, they found out that they had a lot in common. They found out that they are both bisexual and that they're both twins. Now, Matthew's twin died at birth. Chance still has his twin that's living, right? So, um, Chance says that, um, no, Matthew says that Chance tells him he often comes to Atlanta. He visits here a lot, but every time that he comes and they're supposed to meet up, something happens and they don't meet up, right? One time they were supposed to meet up at Magic City. That's the strip club, the famous strip club. I still want to go to that strip club just to see what it do. But, um... They were supposed to meet over there at that strip club, but Matthew says he got all the way there, sat there, waited on him. Chance sends him a message talking about he had a um, his root canal fell out. I, I want to maybe he's talking about his feelings, some shit like that. But he said that that fell out, and then another time he came down there, they were supposed to meet up. He said he was having car trouble, yada yada yada. All these excuses that he has as to why they can't meet up. Now Matthew is saying that you know they they flirt a lot in text messages they've sent the, each other's pictures before that they've been communicating on a regular basis enough for Matthew to think that they are in some type of relationship now Matthew thinks that maybe Chance is scared to come out because in most of his things that he posts on social media, he says that he'll put the um, hashtag FTM, like female to male transition. Now, Matthew says that they've talked about that before and that he's told him that he's comfortable with that. So he doesn't know why Chance would feel like he's afraid to come out or come out to the world or whatnot, especially when he says on his social media, he's really active. He takes pictures with his shirt off he portrays himself to be a man but um so he's just you know basically saying that you know everything seems real weird and real sketchy and as of recently two weeks ago he's tried to look for chance on social media now he can't find him nowhere so neve and his co-host this week is uh kamiko glenn she's so brooke so so from orange is the new black um they're sitting down and they're talking with him or whatever so he says that um he told him jokingly if you don't meet up with me i'm gonna call catfish on you and that chance told him aha yeah right do it and so he thinks that maybe that's what sort of you know triggered him to kind of disappear because he's thinking okay now the motherfucking gonna block me on social media now, Matthew is, um, he's now he's an accountant, all right? He used to be a former deputy sheriff. Now, he's saying that it's illegal for him to use government resources to do any kind of background checks or researches on anybody. Otherwise, he would have done one on him a long time ago because the motherfucker been giving him the runarounds. So, like I said, after he told him that I was going to call catfish on your ass, uh, after that, he done disappeared. He's blocked him from social media. He ain't been able to get in contact with him, right? But he says that he told Chance, like, what's up well you know like why did she block me and he was like oh no i didn't block you you know check your black man you must have blocked me so it's it's real fucking sketchy the way the shit is going off the rip it's real fucking sketchy so neve and kamiko are doing their little research right so matthew sends them all the information that he has about chance including a resume that he helped him create when chance had him under the impression that he was going to be coming down to atlanta that's one thing i forgot to mention 
He said that their relationship was getting so close that Chance was mentioning that he wanted to move to Atlanta. And so Matthew went through the whole process of helping him to create a resume and look for apartments and look for jobs. So all this information he sent over to Neve and to Kamiko so they could do their research, right? So Neve is looking at the resume. He finds some names on there. He tries to call a couple of numbers on there. When he calls him, numbers going straight to busy signal, right? So Neve is like, well, let me just look up these names. Long story short, Neve looks up uh, Neve looks up the names that are on the resume. Come to find out, it's his mother and his sister. They were able to find out that yes, maybe he really is a twin because that's another thing. He said uh, Matthew said that he his legal name is Leslie, but he goes by Chance. So. When they were doing their research, they were able to find out that, the, uh, first of all, the names that he, the resume was a complete and total lie. The information that he gave Matthew was a lie. There were places that he actually worked. That was a made up resume. And that was just his mother's name on there, his sister's name on there. But you know, like, quite honestly, who has a lot on a goddamn resume? Let's keep it real. You were into distributing and manufacturing. You mean you were a dope boy? Just saying. So they end up searching Chance's social media, right? And so they find one girl who's friends on um, friends with him on there who recently sent him a message. They reach out to the girl immediately. She calls back, right? And so they're asking her, how do you know Chance? She says that they met pretty much on social media, that they never met in real life. But Chance would often talk about going and visiting a girl that worked over at Magic City. Maybe she was a hairdresser there. Neve is like, all right, great, thanks, we appreciate that. So Neve is like, well, let me call Magic City and see if anybody answers the phone. He calls Magic City. He says it's a little early, probably like 11 o'clock or something like that. Some cheerful ass chick answered the phone. First of all, it's 11 o'clock. I mean, maybe she's a house mom. You know, not that I knew about these things, but maybe she's got to be there early because she's got to get, you know, certain things going, whatever, right? But this is what got me. Neve is like, okay, so we're we're filming an episode of Catfish, and the girl was all enthusiastic. She's like, oh, yes, I love Catfish. It's my favorite show. So... He's like, yeah, well, we're trying to help out a friend of ours who's looking for a guy named Chance who may talk to a girl there who does hair. And she's like, oh, you're talking about um, Sharonda or Sharanda. And he was like, oh, yeah. She was like, oh, yeah, I think she goes by her Instagram gram name is this. And she does this. And she's not here right now. But, yeah, she's a hairdresser. Like, bitch, that has to be some kind of company policy. But you just can't be telling random anybody, oh, yeah, her Instagram is this, or she got this, or she got this. Bitch, that could be somebody coming to serve her ass a motherfucking subpoena or something, and you don't went and told him all this girl personal information like that. Like, you, you need to be fired. You need to be fired from that. Because you should not be going and telling that girl business like that. Like, she, any, that could be a crazy, deranged, baby daddy, baby mama situation. And now he know where the bitch work, what a ha Instagram handle is and all of that. Because your ass want to be friendly. Because the motherfucker done told you on the phone that they need. That could have been any goddamn body. So they go on the girl's Instagram page, Sharanda. They find her information. They find her phone number and they text her, right? Immediately, she texts them back. And she's like, um, yeah, like, who is this? And, and I'm trying to figure out, like, what are you trying to call me for? And he's like, well, yeah, my name is Neve. We're filming an episode of Catfish. We're just trying to know if you know who this person is, yada, yada, yada. First, she's like, well, no, I don't know who this is. And I'm at work right now. I can't really talk by it. And hangs up on him. And they're like, wait a minute. Like, whole hold on that 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 didn't even seem right right there off the rip it seemed like something wasn't fucking right after that they get back on chance's social media page to see what they can find out about him come to find out they blocked now they had just hung up the phone with the girl not even five minutes before that go back and try to get back on chance's page and now they now they're blocked so now they know that these motherfuckers is in cahoots some kind of goddamn way. Because how is it we go from talking to this girl, not even five minutes later, we go back, when they were just on the page, now they're blocked from there. Yeah, it... It was some sketchy shit from the jump with that shit. So the next day, Sharanda calls them back, right? And she's like, you know, when you call me, you caught me off guard. I couldn't really talk because I was at work and I had a customer customer in front of me. But we can meet up at my shop. Here's the address. Go ahead, come over here now. Meet me, right? So they go over there. They meet with Sharanda. 
and off the rip, she's defensive as hell. She's like, okay, who are you and why are you trying to, I'm trying to figure out why y'all are trying to find Chance. Like, what is it that you need to know about Chance? Come to find out, she's his girlfriend. She's his girlfriend. But what was crazy about it, she seemed more or less irritated that they were looking for him and not so much irritated that the fact that he was having a whole communicable relationship with a man and he's with you. She was like, okay, well, I'm just trying to figure like, what are y'all trying to find him for? Like, it doesn't matter. I'm his girlfriend. It doesn't matter. Like y'all don't need to be looking for him unless she was doing that because she was trying to save face, whatever it was, bitch, either way, uh-uh, that don't sit well with me. Mm-mm. But she's pissed off at them. And the way she was going at them, she was like, well, y'all don't need to worry about it. I'm his girlfriend. Like, I don't know why y'all trying to find him. It's like almost she she didn't want them to go looking for him. And she even told them that right now is not a good time because his father is sick. So if I were y'all, I would wait. And right now is not a good time. Which is what they did because after that, they... um. They end up leaving out of there because shit got real fucking awkward. So they ended up actually reaching out to Chance, um, just Neve and Kamiko. They called him and he told them that his father passed away. So that threw them for a loop. That was like a catfish first for them where the catfish that they're looking for tells them, you know, like, hey, look, I had a death in the family. Can't talk, yada, 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 right? So they regroup five weeks later, right? They end up getting a phone call from Chance. He calls Neve and was like, yeah, I'm ready to talk. You know, I had a lot going on, but I want to meet y'all. I want to talk so I can get this all over with or whatever, right? So they get the, the gang gets all back together. Neve, Kamiko, and Matthew. They fly out to New York where Chance is, get to Chance's house. He comes outside and it's really him, okay? First good thing, it's really him. So they're like, okay, so what was the relationship with you and Matthew? Because he's under the impression that, you know, you guys were maybe building something, but then you disappear, you went away. And he was like, well, no, I have a whole girlfriend. And he's like, right, but you had him under the impression that, you know, maybe you were going to move to Atlanta and maybe you guys were going to start some things. He, slowly Chance starts getting defensive. He's like, wait a minute. I never said nothing like that. Like, I would never date no man and I would never do nothing like this. But the way he was answering back his body language, his responses, just his whole demeanor giving back was completely fraud. It was all fraud. I feel like he was on the defense because they were spitting some truth to him and he wasn't ready for that, right? So they end up going in the house, into Chance's house. Maybe it was an Airbnb. I don't know what the fuck it was, right? So they sit down and they talking, right? Next thing you know, Neve and Chance kind of starts going back and forth. Then Chance and Matthew go back and forth. Then Chance tells Matthew, you a catfish yourself. Matthew's like, well, how the hell am I a catfish? Chance is like, oh, really? You, 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 you're not a catfish? He was like, how am I a catfish? Chance calmly, calmly gets up, walks behind Matthew and says, okay, so you're not going to say how you a catfish? Well, what is this? What is this? He snatches the man's lace front off his fucking head. Bitch, about died. I about died died about died about shat myself what the i have not i've only seen women do petty shit like that i ain't never in my life seen a man snatch another man's lace front smooth off his head it looked like he pulled his goddamn roots out of his head the way he pulled that off he was he had to look a fucking shock we was all shocked Neve was like oh kamiko was like oh Matthew was like, <gasps> like, I, I, bitch, I was so like, I was like, oh, he pulled, he snatched, snatched the man's lace front smooth off his fucking head. Y'all about goddamn passed the fuck out when he did that. Sp snatched it off his head, took some of his skin with that bitch is what it looked like, or he took some of the fuzzies off the top of his goddamn head, but he snatched that motherfucker thoughts out when he took that goddamn lace front, threw it on the goddamn couch, and then walked away. Everybody looking shocked as fucking hell. What, a, what, what do we do now? 
How do we come back from this shit? So Kamiko ends up going outside and talking to Chance. Because after he done snatched this man lace off his goddamn head, he goes outside because he pissed off. So Kamiko goes outside and talks to him and is like, Doubt, what the fuck was this? Why the fuck did you do that? He's like, you know what? I've just been under a lot of stress. I just lost my dad. I got all of this going on. And, and I, I just do want to apologize to him because I didn't mean to do that, right? So he goes back in the house and he apologizes to him. You know, tell him, my bad. I didn't mean for snatching your lace front off. I hope I didn't hurt your scalp. He tells him, I hope I didn't hurt your scalp. I about passed out a fucking kid when he said that like <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh. I'm not gonna laugh. I'm not gonna laugh. But he apologizes to him. He tells him that he hurts. He hopes he didn't hurt his scalp. And then they depart ways from there. Later on, Neve catches up with Matthew. He has his little check-in that he does in three months with him. And he tells him that he had one more conversation with Chance after that. After that, he has not had any more conversations, y'all. That was the end of the episode. The shit. It's not funny for anybody anybody to get their goddamn wig snatched off but to see a man snatch another man's lace front baby that has to go down in the petty handbook of 2019 bitch because i about shat myself I about shat myself when i seen that shit y'all let me know what y'all thought about this review please like comment subscribe and share and your auntie will see you in the next video y'all peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i holla